Showbiz in full HD. Fiona Ramsey, welcome to Showbiz in full HD. Hi. It's, to be here. Thank you for taking time out of your insane schedule. I know what it's like getting a show in the theatre. And uh, you're just about to start a new run of Blonde Poison. Tell us a little bit about playing this character, Stella Goldschlag. Well, it's interesting because at first, when I first read the play, um, in fact, I gave it to Daphne a long time ago. And she felt that the subject matter was a little sensitive, uh, given that Stella Goldschlag is a... Uh, a German Jewess who grew up in the, she was 18 in 1940, but she had blonde hair yes. and she took, f and blue eyes, and she took full advantage of that to such an extent that um, she was eventually jailed, found out for her crime. But the story is not really, I mean, it's about that, but it's about the loss of her child as well. And you, I think why it's so important is it's just about human error, human. Yes. I suppose frailty, human, we're all capable of great mistakes. Um, so when I first read the character, go on to that, when I first read the character, we were a little bit iffy about doing it, and she seemed such an unlikable character. So we first did Ma Miss Dietrich Regrets, yes, because it was sir. written by the same author, who is my sister-in-law. And she, so when that was a, a great success, I was traveling to Grahamstown, in fact, and they turned down all three of my proposals, um, oh. <laughs> which is not Three unusual. doors slammed in your face <laughs> in one go. And I was driving, I can't remember where I was driving to, but I think it was in Cape Town, and someone, um, Ismail phoned me and said, have you got a show for uh, the solo fest with a theme of war or um, isolation? And I said, I do. And so I phoned Jana and I said, we're doing this play. So it was a great way to test it out, and it was amazingly successful in Grahamstown. And in fact, it was said that we played to the most capacity in terms of, not the most people necessarily because mm. of the venue. So that was great. And then I phoned Daphne and she said, let's have it. And so we did it a year ago and it was, you know, very successful. But it's really hard when you do a rerun. Yes. Because, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I've seen it or whatever. Mm. So we, we're just hoping that it'll generate more interest. Yeah. I mean, I think theatre is alive and well in South Africa. I mean, you know, it kind of ebbs and flows, and obviously there's the musical side of things, but w what do you think about the theatre scene? I mean, there's some incredible, incredible original works coming out, and, um, and a whole bunch of other exciting stuff going on in the country, and touring internationally. But I think you've just hit the nail on the head when you said you either have these grand, huge, fantastic musicals with great sets, great costumes, uh, music and they cost a fortune and of course uh, they probably make their return mm. um, if they you know if they do well so you either have that huge or you have tiny mm. so nowadays but due to financial constraints you can only do kind of one person two person shows the days of shows with eight or nine people um, even farces which have six or seven people mm. um, are just they're not feasible they're not viable so we get a proliferation of one person shows yes and I think that audiences I've heard them say are there two people in this or oh one oh no I don't want to see it but the interesting thing is to to being a one-woman one show takes such guts, I think. Um, I've never done it myself. It's something that scares, scares me to death after death. But I think that to see somebody master, their, master that, to see you do that in a one-woman show is incredible. I think that this, this piece is kind of extraordinary, and I don't think it'll stop here. I have the sense mm. that it'll go on, whether it's smaller venues or something, because it's, it, it's so iconic. Everyone has a collective memory of the Holocaust, no matter what it is. Yes. Even if it's just a picture of the shoes, or, you know, mm. horrific pictures nonetheless. So there's, there is intrigue, but the reason it's a warning to people to never let it happen again. And we've seen the Rwandan genocide, and we've seen... so. Uh, the other extraordinary thing about the it's about immigration. These people were fleeing you know, Germany at a, at, at, a, at the, a terrible time, and we see it now. We have millions and millions of refugees fleeing Syria, mm. fleeing war-torn places, and not being allowed entry anywhere. Yeah. So I think it's giving a hum a human side to to what refugees go through, what who people are. I mean, she's not a particularly likable character, but she doesn't apologize. She doesn't feel sorry for herself. She says at the end of the play, what can I say? <laughs> what can I say? I mean, that's life. And she's very blunt about mm. it. She's very candid about how sexual she, she's she was. She's a survivor as well, I guess. She did what she had to do. I think, and that's the issue. What would you do to stay alive? Yeah. I mean, you, could, you can't know, and it's in the play until you really ask. Yes. But w the other thing is that she is a good person, essentially. 
who did something bad. Yeah. It doesn't make her bad, but it certainly doesn't make the mm. bad right. She made a, a choice, good. yeah. You know, so, and, and I think if you, if you see what, to the lengths to w which she went, and she was beaten up, she was raped, she mm. was attacked she was by, by, by the Nazis, and, and still, to save her parents, and then they ask her, why did you carry on after your parents died? And she said, how do you stop? You know, yeah. how, how do you suddenly stop? You, you're then... Mm. You know. Tell us a little bit more about the playwright. You said uh, it's, it's a relative of yours, kind of married into the family. Tell us more. So Gail Lowe um, was married to my brother, and her mother was Ruth, who was born in Berlin and left. The mother and father were on a train. She was very young. Her sister ended up in Israel, and Ruth ended up in South Africa. So I knew her. Mm. So this play has far more resonance for me because it's it's really based on. And I think Stella, although she was nothing, Ruth was much warmer. Yes. But there's a, there's an element. And I remember Ruth saying the once I said, "Do you? I mean, how do you feel going back to Germany?" And she said, "I was born in Berlin. It's my country. Yes, it's, it's home. It's my, my city." Yeah. And. Um, so, I th and I think it raises so many questions. I mean, she behaves like a spy under a terrible regime. I mean, the resonances here are unbelievable mm. uh, and still continue. Yeah. So I think it, 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 it just questions humanity, frailty, and I suppose motherhood in terrible, in, in, one critic said, it is the story of a woman who loses her child. That's all it is really. The other things that happen to her mm. in between. Um, she's not a hero. She's not a vic she refused to be a victim, yeah. and yet ultimately she was a victim of the system because what, they, what they're saying is even spies are victims of, yeah. the, you know, of the system. Mm. But um, so uh, it's Gail, almost like an ordinary woman caught in at an extraordinary time. time. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's when you read her book, the, 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 the play is about the man who came to write her story because they were at school together and he left. Mm. He managed to get out because he was from a very wealthy family. They were not wealthy, but they were cultured, as she, as she says. Um, and so he comes back to, and you know, she was duplicitous. There's no mm. way. He even says in the book, when he went to see her, she said, I'm so poor and I, I'm frail and I need money. If you want to come and interview me, I need money. And he saw this figure, he was waiting at a cafe across, he saw this figure of 75, 80, I think she was then, 80, nipping up in a, in a tailored suit, and climbing, flying up <laughs> immaculately. So I think... You know, she was duplicitous at all times yes. to survive. Yeah. So she probably did that to survive as well. So we've spoken a little bit about the playwright, and obviously there's you playing the character. And what about the director? Well, Jana Ramos Violante uh, and I have worked together now for four or five years, and we've done about eight projects together. And Jana tentatively phoned me many years ago and asked me, four years ago, in fact, if I would play the in doubt and uh, the the nun in doubt. And she said she was terribly nervous. Anyway, the, the long and the short of it was that we, we'd never stopped working after that. Um, she's an extraordinary, we had the same vision of theater. We love the same sort of theater. We have the same ethics and discipline about theater. So we have this similar expectancy. Um, and she's just, she's a woman with remarkable vision and remarkable energy and has a sort of self-belief that I find staggering. Incredible. Well, we can't wait to see you in this run. Um, it's on at Theatre on the Square. It's on at Theatre on the Square. It opens on the 31st. We have a preview on the 30th, and it runs till the 17th of February. Fantastic. That's Blonde Poison. We can't wait to see you, and thanks for not charging us for the interview. <laughs> <laughs> Showbiz in full, in full HD. HD.